kidding me? I was not expecting that. I'm sure it's a human error and an honest mistake. It's the only toilet we got. I just landed in Beijing in China and this is where I'll be starting my Trans-Siberian Railway Adventure. Behind me of course is a very famous Tiananmen Square gate. I'm here with lots and lots of people, can you see? This is my very first time in China. I've made a conscious decision to never come to this place. I don't know why. Maybe because I don't trust that the food here is real because of all the documentaries that I've seen online. But you know what? That's a very insular way to think. How can you expand your mind if you don't actually get out of your bubble and comfort zone and actually explore the world and experience it for yourself firsthand? There's so much culture, there's so much history. China is quite the force to be reckoned with and I just cannot believe I'm standing here at Tiananmen Square. Probably the largest square I've ever <laughs> set foot on out of all the places that I've been to. What a great way to kickstart my Trans-Siberian Railway adventure. This is my guy, Tao. He's also a foodie and he's taking me around the streets of Beijing and we took two trains mm -hmm. to come to this small little district for Tianping, yes. which is a type of uh, pancake. pancake. Yep. This guy has scored every single gym thing in Beijing and he decided that this is number one and we're queuing up with this dodgy little back door. <laughs> we can't even see how they're preparing, it's very mysterious. <laughs> There's no tourists here at all, just locals who are in the know. Wow! <laughs> this is a typical breakfast restaurant in Beijing and you see the queue is super long. People are here for pretty much deep fried dough fritters, tofu, which is like ink curd, like tofu. And they also have raw meat in this air conditioned space. This is so funny. And there's also other forms of meat. Look at that. All kinds. And of course, my favorite, feng jiao. I'm here at the Great Wall. There's a bit of a break, and that's where we'll be starting our hike from. All the way up there. As you can see, zero tourists. I just had to pick the toughest part of the wall to uh, climb. This has very little tourists. It's called Shi Xia Guan, which is the remnant Badaling, or what's left of it. It's the only part of the Great Wall that was broken through by a bunch of peasants who are revolting against the then um, king. You can't do Beijing without doing the Great Wall. So you get up the wall through a little hiking path. Oh my god, oh. so beautiful. Lucky for you. And so bloody steep. Guys, I've only just started. Ah, holy shit. I totally understand why there are no tourists here. This is a really, really steep part of the wall and I wouldn't recommend coming here without a guide. At the worst, at the steepest, it was about a 70 degree angle with no stairs, by the way. And I wore hiking shoes and even then I felt like slipping backwards all the time. Oh, still have that much more to go and that's only the hump. This runs across China, guys. This runs across China. The Great Wall of China spans from east to west of China and I have only covered a fraction of a fraction of it. And I've seen enough. It is amazing how the people actually built it back in the day. As a tourist, just climbing one teeny weeny portion of the wall, I'm feeling exhausted already. I think after an hour in, I've seen enough. I'm ready to go back. Are you Jack? Uh, good. <laughs> I think I'm gonna slide all the way down to the car park guys. Time now is 6 30 a.m. and I'm here at the Beijing railway station. This is where I'll be departing and embarking on my Trans-Siberian railway adventure. Oh my god I can't believe I'm doing it. So I'm gonna go from Beijing all the way to Russia via Mongolia and Siberia and I'm pretty much just waiting to board the train. My train mate Liz. Hello. We were told to go back and forth because two conductors can't seem to get the shit together. Commotion. Fighting, 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 fight, 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 fight. <laughs> so second class cabin is a four-bidder. 
And here's a tip, you want to get the lower beds because then you have access to the table. So far there's no one sleeping above us and we hope that it stays that way. We're also issued pillows and sheets but the pillow as you can see is super fucking gross. You see like saliva stains and all that. <laughs> Liz is like I'm eating, I'm eating! And then we're also issued sheets which I'm absolutely not gonna touch. And then we have these covers that are super useless because they're a bit stained but I had no choice so I kind of lined my bed with this mattress cover. I'm probably going to sleep on my backpack. Oh my god, we are moving! This is so unreal! Okay, so this is where the toilets are. Oh my god! Are you fucking kidding me? You are kidding me! I was not expecting that. I am going to be singing to the train attendant because this train is supposed to be clean before we set off from the Beijing station. I mean, this is the start of our journey. I'm sure it's a human error and an honest mistake, but I want it cleaned soon. It's the only toilet we got! <laughs> Two hours on a train, um, time for some food. I'm making my way to the dining spot right now. Ta-da! This is my snack stash. Train journey can be quite long, so I was advised to bring some snacks on board so I can swap them with fellow passengers. So I've decided to bring Bi Ching Hyang Bakwa. <laughs> These are individually wrapped so I can like share them with passengers from outside of Singapore. This is my favorite buy. I bought this when I was in Scandinavia. These are like tea in a bag that doubles up as a kettle. See? Just brew in a bag and then it kind of strains in a bag and then doubles up as a kettle and you can kind of pour it out in a cup. So it's about 8 pm right now and in about three hours we'll be swapping dining carts. So currently we're on a Chinese train with a Chinese dining cart. So we're gonna be swapping out to a Mongolian dining cart and this whole changing uh, of the carts will take about four hours. Okay, so they changed the dining cart. It's the Mongolian dining cart right now and seriously, the interiors are <laughs> Look at the details! So this is what happens when the train goes from China to Mongolia, Siberia and then Russia. The dining carts changes according to the regions we travel into. So there's breakfast, omelette with onion, longsh, which is a cabbage salad with steamed beef, and borscht with cream. Oh, I'm having borscht food on the Mongolian dining cart. My bad. A bit watery. But I'm just so glad that it's flavor in it. It's got vegetables. Just reach Ulaanbaatar! Welcome to the city of Ulaanbaatar. And here's a fun fact. 8 out of 10 cars here in Ulaanbaatar are Toyota Prius. Look, Prius, Prius, Prius. <laughs> They're everywhere. So anyway, the city of Ulaanbaatar is our first stop in Mongolia. Tomorrow morning, I'll be going to the national park and staying in a girl with a nomadic family. I'm here, um, just outside of Ulaanbaatar, and behind me is a towering statue of Genghis Khan. This is the tallest statue in the world, taller than Christ the Redeemer in Rio, and it's put together 10 years ago by 500 engineers. I hear that the toilet is actually located in the pool of the statue. I finally arrived at my girl in the Terush National Park. Oh my god, so beautiful getting a taste of what it's like to be in Mongolia and to be amongst nature and I love it. I'm in a tourist girl camp. This is not the most authentic experience but you know what, I forgive because we're in this valley right now surrounded by stunning mountains. I am just grateful, really really peaceful. I am girl number 16, stepping inside. This bit here is kind of like the kitchen stovetop. Uh, you can use to heat up the tent or you can cook over it like a barbecue and stuff like that. And this bed that directly faces the main door is where the head of the household sits at or sleeps at because that's like the most honorable spot. That is where the guests would sit. And to the right would be another bed if this was an authentic tent. And that's where the women and children would sit. And here would usually be like the cooking and firewood area. So you turn these wheels clockwise and it said that it would erase all your past wrongdoings and mistakes. 
who am I to contest something that's been going on for centuries. So I just visited the meditation temple. You know, ever since I went to Bhutan, I believe in good vibrations. Being on top here, surrounded by nature. Whether you're a believer or a non-believer, believe me, you will receive. These days, nothing makes me happier than hiking. It's just so good for the soul. So my guy just gave me this. This is like a flower. But what actually is it? It's onion. Wild onion. Wild onion. It's like a spring onion. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, it's actually very sweet. Yeah. This one is already grown up. Yeah. Mm. This other one is more tasty and it's mm. good. This is so good. Mm. Your mother's always pick up these wild onions, put them in milk, yeah? Mmm. Make some vegetable soup. Foraging, guys. Foraging. So, what is this? This is mare's milk, Mongolian horse milk. We call it Arik. Where can you buy this? Didn't buy it, just brought from the center part of Mongolia. Nomadic people. If it's shake well, it's tasty. So it's a 6 and 12% with the wine. alcoholic. Oh, that's just like wine. Yeah, mm. like a Mongolian wine. But it's good for your stomach, it's digestion system, yeah? Lots of uh, minerals. So I see that there's some like black bits in there, what are they? Yeah, this one is uh, grass. Grass? In grass, the milk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it smells like there's very gamey meat in it. Okay, you know what? It's not so bad now. Yeah, yeah. It's sour, it tastes like cheese, like goat's cheese. And it tastes like there's mutton in there. Liz, your turn. Oh, no. Liz, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> nice wine. Nice. Tastes like gone off yogurt. I don't hate it. She likes, she likes anything with alcohol. I'm one third of the way into my Trans-Siberian train journey to Moscow. And can I just say, I am so glad that I've kickstarted this trip from Beijing. I've stayed away from China all these years on purpose. No thanks to all these videos on YouTube that show China selling fake food from fake eggs to meat made from cardboard. So of course I got paranoid because food is life to me. But you know, I decided that this year is all about getting out into the world, outside of my bubble, to see the world with my own eyes for what it is instead of just settling for secondhand news. And you know what? I fell in love with the city. Not a fan of the smog, but oh my god, the city has some beautiful architecture and it helped that the food was next level amazing. My expectations of Mongolia were pretty high. I mean, I expected stunning landscapes, and pretty good food. Well, I did get stunning landscapes. I mean, they were everywhere, breathtaking. People were lovely and warm. Unfortunately, the food was a huge deal breaker for me. The Mongolian diet consists mainly of bland boiled meat. I just can't deal with that. They don't really eat green leafy vegetables as well, which is a huge problem for me because I love my vegetables and I can't live without them. I tend to make big life decisions around food, so, I think it's safe to say that I will not be coming back to Mongolia for a long time ever. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tomorrow morning, I hop back on the train, this time to Irkutsk in Siberia. It's like a Siberian border town. Not sure what to expect, but I'm ready to uh, set foot into Russia. It's always been my dream to go there. If you want to follow my journey, uh, you can do so on Instagram. I'm at HeyRoz. If you haven't done so already, download the Click Network app. It's absolutely free and you get to watch the videos up to a month ahead of its YouTube release. So get it, get it, get it. Yeah, I guess I'll see you in Siberia. Bye.